Hi, my name is Mike Simon. I am one of the scrambling instructors and I wanted to talk to you about root finding. Good root finding skills are really important, but so are root keeping skills. It is unusual for a climber to get lost on an ascent, but it is not so unusual for a climber to get lost on the descent. Your root finding skills are going to help you get up. Your root keeping skills will help you get down. Now for the trip, you are going to create a topo map with our route and a good high quality map is crucial to your success. Now before the trip, you're going to study your map to identify handrails, baselines and other features that are going to aid your wayfinding. And you're also going to try to identify any areas along the route that may be problematic for your group's travel. Let's take a look at uh, a map here and orient ourselves to the map. This map is a route for a scramble called the Sawtooth Ridge. And this is a classic Colorado scramble, very fun. Uh, the route starts at the Bierstadt Summer Trailhead following a standard route up to the summit of Mount Bierstadt. And then from the Bierstadt summit, we're going to head off trail and scramble over the ridge that connects Mount Bierstadt to Mount Evans. The blue P on the left represents the parking area off of the Guanella Pass Road, which is a thick black line at the start of the route. Now our route is going to be identified by the yellow line that is overlaid on the Mount Bierstadt Trail. We'll see that initially our route follows a well-established trail indicated by the firm intermittent red trail marking the Mount Bierstadt Trail. And we'll see that our trail crosses Scott Gomer Creek early on at about three quarters of a mile in. And then we're gonna stay right or southeast at a trail junction shortly after we cross the creek. The green shading denotes that we're going to be traveling in vegetation or forest initially. And then shortly thereafter, we're going to be moving into open tundra above treeline as we progress into the white background areas. If we were to zoom into the initial first mile of our travel, you would see more water or swampy or willowy areas. So you would potentially expect a wet first mile. Also note that the topographical lines get closer as we progress to the summit of Mount Bierstadt, which we have marked with a star there. So let's talk about handrails. Handrails are any linear feature on our map that parallel the direction of our travel. A handrail should be easily visible from the route. Uh, these handrails are going to help us stay on route. Some examples of things that you can use as handrails are roads, power lines, trails, railroad tracks, borders of meadows or fields, valleys, streams, cliff bands, ridges. So you can find and may be able to choose from any number of handrails from your map. So handrails along our route might be at number one, there is a larger unnamed body of water that will pass by at about a half a mile. Uh, for number two, we can uh, see the exposed ridge starting at the Bierstadt summit. Uh, our view from the Bierstadt summit, we could uh, see most of the ridge and the steep cliff bands on either side. Or looking at uh, number three there, as we scramble across the ridge, we should be able to see the Silver Dollar Trail, which is uh, just to the north there of the ridge that we're going to be scrambling on. So now let's talk about baselines. A baseline is a long, unmistakable line that lies in the same direction no matter where you are on your route. Uh, some examples of baselines include roads, the shore of a large body of water, trails, power lines, 
railroad tracks or any other feature that is at least as long as the area the party is traveling. in. Now a baseline along our route would be something like CR381 or the Guanella Pass Road. Uh, we could see Guanella Pass Road from most of our route, certainly on the standard routes up to the summit of Mount Bierstadt and across most of the ridge that we're going to cross to get to Mount Evans. Now there is an area where the ridge descends a bit uh, as we approach Mount Evans, the route uh, the CR381 would not be visible from there, but it's only going to be out of our sight for a short period of time. You can also see here that the Mount Evans Road that we've got numbered is number two. It's got the solid black line switch backing down from Mount Evans. Uh, that we could not consider a baseline because it only comes into view at the end of our routes. Um, Looking at our contour lines, we can see the view of the Mount Evans Road would even be blocked by Mount Evans uh, because that uh, road is on the southeast side of Mount Evans. So for your baselines and handrails, uh, one of my friends came up with a rule. She decided that she was going to call them just navigational anchors to avoid any confusion. So just consider a baseline and a handrail, something that your route is anchored to, that you can take a look at, you can see, and you're going to know that you are on your route and where you are along your route. Now, before your trip, you're going to study your map. We wanna take a look for any potential problems like crossing a glacier, water crossings, cliff bands. Uh, you also wanna take a look to see if you can identify any escape routes. Um, so looking at our route, we can see that the initial trail to the summit of Bierstadt that gains about 2,500 feet of elevation. Uh, we need to know that uh, everyone in our group is going to be fit enough to make that approach. We can also see that the last quarter mile to the summit of Bierstadt jags to the southeast to avoid some serious cliff bands. And then from the summit of Bierstadt, uh, we can see that that ridge line over to Evans is very committing, meaning that there is not a good exit if needed due to weather or some other circumstance. We would need to complete at least three quarters of the ridge before we see a good exit just after that sawtooth formation. The contour lines are too steep to the west and then bailing out east to Abyss Lake puts us on the wrong side of Mount Bierstadt with a very long hike out and we end up a long ways away from the trailhead. Now, escape routes off the ridge from Bierstadt to Evans are limited to the steepness of the uh, terrain. So the best practice would be to reevaluate your plan when you're at the summit of Bierstadt prior to proceeding. To ensure a successful descent, to keep the route that you previously found you really do need to be proactive during the ascents. And what that means is that uh, during the ascent, there is a tongue in cheek assumption that if one keeps climbing up, one will eventually reach the top. So as you ascend the mountain, conceptually, your route finding choices can become fewer and fewer and sometimes more obvious. You just keep going up until there's no more up. However, as you're descending the mountain, your route finding choices become greater and potentially more problematic. When descending, there can be really an infinite number of routes down. In theory, as many routes as there are uh, points on the compass. So you need to descend with a plan, following a specific route while making all the correct turns and traverses as necessary. So just to reiterate, a safe and successful descent requires climbers are being proactive during the ascent. A look back often at the route behind you 
This is ex especially helpful for an out and back trip. Look over your descent route as, as you're able during your ascent uh, when you're uh, doing a loop trip. This graphic right here uh, shows us how, you know, as we're descending a peak, we can see so many routes down. There's a much higher risk of us getting lost on the way down. So with that in mind, there are some best practices that we can use to help us stay on route. One of the ways is to clarify the descent route. Identify your descent route during the ascent. So if you're doing an out and back hike, that means that as you're ascending, you turn around a lot so that uh, you're able to visualize your way down, frequently turning back so that uh, you can avoid the situation where as you turn around to come back, you look like you're on a completely new trail. Uh, another uh, thing that you can do if you're doing a loop hike is as you're ascending, uh, take a look where you see your proposed descent route. Um, do you see anything such as any features that might make your descent challenging? Uh, do you see a cliff band? Do you see a snow field where you were planning on descending? Uh, things like that on a loop trip uh, are things that you can be looking out for during your ascent. Now, for an out and back climb, uh, a lot of times you're going to construct uh, route markers uh, using cairns and or uh, flagging tape as well. So when we're using route markers, one of the things we really want to make sure is that the placement of your route marker is meaningful. They have to be placed in such a place that they're going to be visible from above when you're descending. Uh, make sure they're not in a shadow or hidden by some higher point. Now also, you want to be aware that markers can blend in with the surrounding rock. Uh, if this is the case, you're going to want to use some colored flagging uh, or build a overly large markers and or uh, construct something with a unique, unnatural look. Uh, have flagging tape handy, handy because uh, you're actually going to use it. Uh, one thing that's really important though, before you place your markers, consider an agreed upon methodology so that you and your team know what the markers are going to mean. So if you're descending, you locate one of your markers, what is that marker going to tell you? Uh, does it say, oh, great, you're okay, you're on the route, just keep going straight? Or is it a reminder that this is where the route changes direction? And then if that's the case, which way are you going? Are you going to go left or are you going to go right? Have that discussion when you're placing that marker. Another thing to remember that when we're using markers, uh, especially the flagging tape, we're going to use leave no trace principles. Make sure that as you're exiting, you are removing all of that flagging tape and taking it out with you. Marker placement is extremely important Consider marking the point where you exit tree line. Often as the trail will exit tree line, the next portion of your journey can be over talus and boulders where there won't be any visible trail. So on the descent, if you need to re-enter tree line at a specific point, say to pick up your trail again, marking your earlier exit point would be beneficial. You can also consider marking the point where you gain the ridge. Uh, it's been said that if you see one goalie, you've seen them all. Uh, multiple goalies terminating at your ridge line can look very similar from above. Uh, also, as you gain the ridge at the top of a goalie, you can place a marker so you know where to drop back off. Uh, one of our field days, you may have a situation where we've got multiple descent goalies to choose from. And uh, when you get to the summit, it's a good idea to mark the descent direction or at least make a really strong mental note as to which way you want to go. 
Uh, there have been situations where leaders have gotten up from their summit lunch and they start walking and you just walk right down the wrong goalie. Uh, some other things that can be uh, problematic is you can end up with uh, fog or poor visibility that can uh, obscure your vision. And uh, so, you know, it's a good idea to use your tape or maybe when you gain the summit, you know, you might want to build a, a carn really quickly. Always know where you are with respect to your topo map. Chart your progress as you go to maintain an awareness of where you are with respect to where you are in the field. So use your location on the map to anticipate what might be around the next corner. Uh, from a distance, uh, you may need to identify the correct high point or which summit when there are several possibilities to choose from. Now, this is often going to require the use of a map and a compass so that you can take a bearing. To do that, uh, you're going to need to know exactly where you currently are. Another best practice is to discuss the features and topography as a group during the ascent. And that'll really help the group remember the key route finding features for the way back. It also helps involve everybody in the group in the route finding exercise. Now make sure that that discussion focuses more on the unique landmark features. Uh, having a drawn out conversation about a dead tree is not going to be very beneficial if there are numerous dead trees along the way. Uh, in a situation like this, you could also actually even make an out loud, out loud chat you know, amongst yourself, between you and yourself. Whatever it takes to remember uh, features along that descent route that are going to keep you on route. Now, one thing is to be wary of the nondescript ascent routes. If you don't see any meaningful or unique route indicators on the ascent, what can you expect when you're going down? Uh, this is really one of those places where your flagging tape and your cairns are really going to be important for you. Also, Another best practice is to plan for poor visibility. Anticipate what you're going to do if visibility deteriorates. Visibility during your down climb can be impacted due to late afternoon changing weather. Uh, if it's late, things have taken longer than you anticipated, the day can slowly into, turn into night. Um, slow hikers or an unanticipated injury can also consume time. Uh, what are your op options? Uh, your plan A might be to turn around immediately at the first sight of threatening weather and descent. Uh, plan B may be to fall back onto your GPS, maybe just take a chance. Or plan C, you might want to bivy until the weather clears, but uh, make a plan for that situation. What else? Although root finding per se is going to be really important, what else should you be assessing during the actual root finding process other than the root itself? Things that you're going to want to consider are your group's abilities and their experience. What equipment do you have on hand? Uh, what are the mountain conditions that day? What are the weather conditions? What is the train that's in front of you like? What is the state of mind of your climbers? Are they showing good judgment, uh, common sense? Do they have energy? Also the pace and progress of the group relative to your plan. Are you, are you on time from what you uh, calculated prior to uh, leaving? Finally, the, the really the big goal here is that good route finding and good root keeping skills are going to help you contain risk. It will minimize the climbing timeline. So you're down the mountain before weather comes in. Uh, inefficient trial and error root finding can definitely consume daylight. Uh, also, it'll help avoid difficult terrain that include, can include cliffs, 
fourth class pitches, areas prone to rockfall, things like that. It'll especially improve your chance of reaching your goal. And inability to root find when trail hiking is, is somewhat forgiving as you can usually backtrack and follow the existing trail or signs of other people. And inability to root find when you're scrambling off trail can be a very, very problematic situation. So in conclusion, be proactive. Utilize the best practices. And the hard part is really actually being disciplined enough to utilize these best practices and be proactive. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm looking forward to seeing you out in the field.